Hello everyone, welcome to Red Men TV. Liverpool taking on Swansea City Boxing Day 5:30 kickoff. I'll be bang full of turkey and the rest. <laughs> turkey and beer by the time uh, the game kicks off, and I cannot wait to watch the Mighty Reds once again. Um, I'm joined by Chris Pajak and Aubrey Reynolds, the returning Mr. Reynolds. What more could you ask for from a YouTube preview show? I genuinely Answer me. I genuinely don't know. At three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, great, Chris. Uh, look, uh, no other way to look at it other than the Arsenal result is a bit of a disappointment. You know, <laughs> contextually, I, I think in the, you know when we look back on this season, I don't think we'll ever look back on that game as the a result. Not was... a disappointment. The manner in which it happened was yeah. disappointing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Uh, uh, being in a winning position and not winning a football match is always going to be disappointing, particularly given what it could have done. Um, there's definitely issues that Liverpool have to address when it comes to playing in the big games. You know, it can't be overlooked. The Man City game, the Spurs game, the Sevilla games, and now the Arsenal game. The Swansea game is not that type of fixture. Um, Liverpool need to get back into the swing, and we said this two weeks ago, um, doing what they've done pretty well this season. I trust them too as well. You know, yeah. I trust them to put that result behind. I expect we'll see a few changes, maybe four or five changes. Um, some players to be rested, some players to come back into the squad who probably maybe didn't deserve to be out of the team. Mm -hmm. You know, Alex oxlade Chamberlain's a player who I felt <coughs> it was only because it was Arsenal that he was probably given the night off almost, or started on the bench, apologies. I think he'll come back into the side and he'll be looking to add a little bit of a boost, a little bit of an impetus into that side and, and make sure that we go out there and get the result. We won't be taking Swansea for granted, you know. Any time that a club sacks the manager, whether it's a player manager or a new manager or whatever, whatever it is, you get a little bit of something extra out of that side. Players want to impress. They want to make sure that they're going to be on that team sheet week in, week out, and they want to stay in the Premier League, ultimately. That's the most important thing about this, uh, Aubrey. Is that, uh, look, Swansea need to pick up points. They need to get into the habit themselves of, pick, of picking up points. That's what their, their focus is going to be between now and the end of the season. It is no longer a wishy-washy, we'll finish largely between 7th and 14th and we'll be in the Premier League another season. They're in an absolute battle to, to, you know, to, to stay in the Premier League. When you've got that laser-guided focus, it does kind of make the, the task easier psychologically. But the point is... Is that you know okay? Liverpool's home form needs to get needs to get a bit better at home as well. But this is even though you've got the the, uh, the potential of a bounce factor. This is what Liverpool is. Liverpool are to harbour ambitions of being a top four side. You can't drop points against an Arsenal team and then not go and beat Swansea. Yeah, definitely not. It's um, we were talking about it off air. Why the manager? Why the teams keep sacking the managers of shit clubs just before we play them? I think this is one of those things in footy where it every happens club to every thinks football. Why can't we? Why can't we take corners every club? Why the reserve goalkeepers always come to our team refs and have blinders? Refs are yeah. against us. But I said it to you, didn't I? I said I think we just see it because we see Liverpool from our narrative because we're Liverpool fans. But it always seems to be that like our big Sam comes in at Everton, they were giving fucking points out to everyone. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, he, he turns it round by the time they face us. Uh, my worry would be if this was West Brom had just only just sacked their manager, yeah, and then West Brom were coming to us, or if Everton had only just sacked their manager, the Swansea of, I think Swan, I think Clement's been unlucky to be sacked. The reasons why Swansea are shit is not because they didn't have tactics and they didn't have a coach; it's because they don't have good enough players. Yeah. They sold their best players in the summer and didn't let them recruit. You know, Lorente and Sigurdsson left. The Williams left two seasons before that. They, they haven't, they're on their slow decline to coming out the Premier League yeah. and not being a Premier League team anymore. He's a good coach. He, he came, came into their team this time last year as the manager and turned them around and got them playing better football. I don't think Leon Britton, as caretaker manager with the time now he's out of them, can address the problems that they've got in their squad by saying... You're just gonna suddenly be better. And I don't think that, though, but play. And the makeup of that side, the DNA of that Swansea side goes back years <clears throat> to Roberto Martinez. Yeah, it goes Paolo to Brendan Rogers. And Brendan this isn't Rogers. a side that are gonna be hell bent on <coughs> sitting in and are very good at four, five, one or whatever. This is a side that the makeup of their players and their play is all about possession football. Now they've not got the players that they used to have. You're exactly right, but we shouldn't fear them. No, it we, should be we exactly. Should absolutely, just go in there, impose our will. 
on Boxing Day on this side and steamroll them. It should be what and that's Bournemouth, what should be it should be what Bournemouth was the other day. You know, a team who were plucky and they played de decent football, but would just do what they do better. I fear when we have to go against a team who are dogged. You know, West Brom come to us under Pardew and dogged their out. Big yeah. Sam took a small relegation team, frightened of getting relegated, and he took them there and they got the point that they need to stave off going down to the championship. Hope that's not the case. But in our one, it's like that Swansea try and play football and there's not enough players in that team. Yeah. There's no... It's not as if like Real Britain's going to go, oh, they dropped. Because like, even with Frank De Boer in Crystal Palace, he came in and tried to make them play football too quickly. They dropped some of those dogged players, but they're still in that squad. Yeah. So Swansea haven't been buying that player ever. Yeah. They ain't yeah. got them there, well, so it's, it's not going to frighten them. It's interesting. And, and, sorry, Paul, we, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. They're now in the busy period of Christmas. They haven't got the squad to lean back on like Liverpool have. We'll make changes, yeah. we'll freshen it up. Yeah. We had a game further away than they did. You know, we've had an extra day's rest and stuff as well. So we'll be going into this. We'll be the fitter side. We're the better side with the better players. Yeah. Let's fuck the worry. Let's go and support the boys. Absolutely. And I think there's there's a there's a, a factor there for the, for this manager and for the, the team where they want to get a little bit of revenge from last season as well. I mean, you know, we've talked a lot. We did the final way to, to, to Arsenal and it's been a, a consistent theme in a few of these disappointing games where we've, we're talking about disappointments and being like, oh, isn't this shit? from a game where we've drawn. Well, look, Swansea last year was was exactly the the, the, the exacerbated weaknesses of that Liverpool side. You know, we were 2-0 we down. It. Well, you know, we were 2-0 down and we and we got it back to 2 all to then to then go and lose <coughs> it. Um that was that it, it, two things. It we need to go and prove it just to show there's a sign of improvement for us this time around. And again, it also what it go you go back to you look at the goal scorers on, on the day. It's on two for Lorente and one for Gilfie Sigurdsson. Well that should be a note of encouragement yeah. as well. And look, you know, again, all things being equal, I think Tammy Abraham's a potentially a very, very good centre forward. He's got all the tools, hasn't he? If we were raving about Dominic Solanke, well look, this lad's doing it and he's getting his getting his game at, at a Premier League level consistently as well. So I think that there's there's players that cause us problems. They're still they're still okay. They're not you know not to, I think you're right to put aside to put aside the fear, but the point is is that it's it's about Liverpool getting back to what they do, and when we when we play the way we play and we do what we do, then we're capable of we're but capable of winning these these football make matches. Make them worry about us. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, yeah. Have we got any more cliches we can smash out here? Where we go game with two halves. I'll be sick as a parrot <laughs> if we don't get this one. Uh, no, it, look, it, it is what it is, and it's. It's another one that it falls into that bank of fixtures that we've had and we've been very, very good in, to be to be fair, this season. Um, and Boxing Day, you know, the responsibility is on you, Liverpool players, to make sure you don't ruin the, 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 the tail end of Christmas for all of us. Um, right, we're going to get on to preferred 11s in a moment, but uh, before we do, a little reminder to you to go over to the redmentv.com and sign up. Some amazing content going on. We've had our Christmas specials, of course. We're doing the mid-season review this week where we look back at how Liverpool done. We're going to stack up the fixtures against like for like of how we performed against teams last season to get a real clear idea of whether this has been a uh, an overperforming, an underperforming, a good or, or whatever season so far, and where the team goes in the future as well. Um, have a quick look though at what we're doing. Kicking it off this Monday, we've got Joel Matter. Tuesday is King Kenny Daglish. Wednesday, Liverpool CEO Peter Moore. Thursday, the man, the legend, Jamie Carragher. Friday is Joe Gomez. Saturday is Lee Evans. And Sunday is the captain, Jordan Henderson. In addition to this, every month you get 12 exclusive video shows and up to 20 exclusive podcasts as well. If you love what we do and you want to support the Redmen TV, then do it. Become a Redmen TV supporter. There has never been a better time this Christmas. Go to www.theredmentv.com. Brilliant. There we go. Lads, that was a weird way of saying it. Lads, gentlemen, how are we? Let's have our preferred levels and Aubrey, let's go with yours. <laughs> Alex. Yeah. Who's Alex? I don't the know. The big Brazilian centre half who yeah, used to play yeah, for Chelsea. We've drafted him in. An extraordinary. We've drafted him in this for this one. I didn't realise he'd do TAA, did I? I've been, I've been away for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you not know? Trent. Trent, oh yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, why not? Why not Arn? Uh, yeah, oh, look, I've made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, you've gone for Simon Mignolet in goal? Yeah. Um, Why? 
You, you would prefer to have Mignolet over Karius? I'd prefer to He's have... He's hiding behind his board now as well. I'd prefer to have De Gea, wouldn't I? Or Reese or, or, or Black. You know, I'd prefer to have a good keeper. Um, he's look. He made a fucking mistake. He's done it before in the past. <laughs> he, he's gonna do it again, isn't he? You know, he is where he is. I, I know. I know this is gonna contradict it because it's not strictly true. But Carius has, has played a few Premier League games, but he seems to be more the, the European keeper. Mm -hmm. I don't see the point in changing him. Keepers shouldn't get knackered. They shouldn't be tired. Or, yeah. And I think he needs to redeem himself because he's gonna play more football. It's not as if shit. That was the last one. We, we've you've shit the bed. You're out now. It's always going to be Carrius. Mignolet's going to play again this season. Yeah, I so he needs to get back into almost, the team. To be fair, Mignolet is almost guaranteed to start this game, Chris, because of what Aubrey says there. Is Jürgen Klopp, he's not the kind of manager to throw someone under the bus. Now, my God, there comes an amount of time when... It's like helping your fallen comrade when you're being chased by a zombie horde. It's great, but if you, you know, if it comes to a point where it's them or you... You're pushing them to the hordes, and maybe, maybe this is the one where where Mignolet's just been limping along for a bit too long. Um, but we've seen it with Lovren, you know, we've seen it with Clavan, we've seen it with Moreno. When they've had bad games, Jurgen Klopp's gone, no, grr, I stand by my man. Um, go out there and prove everyone wrong again, <laughs> so, again. Um, so I, I would I'm going Carius because I think no, I, I've, I've gone I'm, I'm going Carius because I think he makes us better. Mm. Um, I, you know, and. I've said, it, I've said it a couple of weeks ago. I don't want Carriers to be coming back in the Champions League in February having not played a game of football for yeah. fucking six weeks. Keep him playing in those midweek games if you're still unsure about who the yeah, goalkeeper absolutely. is. He can put Carriers into this side for me and, and just say that. That is the reason that I'm doing it. Yeah. You know, he's I'm playing the midweek fresh. game and, and yeah. I'm not but I'm not bombing Mignolet out. Yeah. When even though he is. I mean the point is, is that we'll see it as we'll all see it as being bombed out, naturally. Um, but it doesn't matter how it's perceived, largely. As long as he's as lying as, and looking no, no, at his, no, lying to me. No, but, like. but that's the point: is that he can he can swing it however he wants, and it might you know that might genuinely be the reason. You know, it could just be a rotate. It could be a rotational thing, just poorly timed on the back of a of a, of a howler from 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 Simon Mignolet. But uh, moving through to the midfield, I've got yeah, Aubrey and I've gone for Genie and Chan Ankeren. You've just gone for Emre, yeah, to get Ox and Lallana into the team, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I've gone for I've gone for Lana. The same thing. I, we had a very brief chat about this off camera before. I think if he gets a few minutes against Arsenal, it's more likely to happen. It would be mad to throw him in to a starting, you know, to a starting berth when he's played what five or six minutes of footy in the last two or three weeks, and then another five, probably about fifteen minutes this season cumulatively he's played. Um, but my God, Chris, I want to see him play football. I want to see him play football, Paul, and I want to see him play with Oxley, Chamberlain, and Chan behind. Mm. Um, <laughs> I just think <laughs> you, like, you, this is it's now, almost as if you want to see the preferred eleven that you've well, on that board. It, otherwise, it wouldn't preferred. be my preferred yeah, eleven, would it? Um, listen, I just think the work rate that you're getting out of Ox and Lana and the creativity that could end up being a really great midfield partnership for us. Yeah. Now, if we had a really good defensive midfield there, you, like. I'd have a lot more confidence in it. I think we don't have a defensive midfielder at the club that makes that work at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think against the likes of Swansea, that should. That, that, that should. And you've yeah. got five very, very creative players there. Um, and I've, you know, I've dropped Mo Salah because I think mm. out of all the players, he's probably played the most minutes out of all of them. So I've I'll give him a bit of a rest. I've done the same. And to be honest, I've got Solanke for a similar thing. This is Again, we're, we're, we're straying into the what Klopp will likely do, stroke preferred 11, but it's a wonderful world, isn't it? And we can do what the fuck we want because it's our show. Um, the, so I, I, Firmino was good against Swansea last time out, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he's good. He's, he's good. He's good. He's good. One worldy as well. Um, but again, I think you've got so many games coming up that is a rotational cycle of keeping those players as fresh as possible. I think he'll look could be back in as well. You know, he was only sick, wasn't he? Potentially, you know, <coughs> he wasn't on the bench, was he, no, against no. Arsenal? But, you know, it's, um, you could, you know if, it, if it's just illness... And it's not a muscular up problem, then you, you should be fine just to, to just to drop straight back in. Was Ings wasn't on the bench, was no. he? The, the, no. that's also, yeah, we've definitely got options. I mean, look, here's the thing: if if Swansea were the best team in the Championship, you wouldn't you you wouldn't bat an eyelid putting a Solanke or an Ings or whatever into this game. I mean, I, I know that's a bit disrespectful because they could still end up like it's for Premier League points, this season. And that's why you yeah. why you head your bets a bit, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, look, these are things. Solanke's got a, a few games of late so it wouldn't surprise me and I, I would go for it because 
I think we've got enough. I think all right, I think Salah will get the rest. I think Mane having been subbed, I think was the the, the fresher of them. Maybe I've gone one change too many and dropping Coutinho okay. as well. I've got a question. We don't normally do this. Out of the three sides here, who do you think's got the best chance of winning the game? I'm gonna I'm gonna say Aubrey. He's just probably got the best. He's got the fan the four. Four. I think. Yeah, I'm more. I'd be most excited to see your one. Actually, I don't. I have not. I haven't seen it written down like that before. I think that's madness. I think your. I think yours no... is the best balance between realism and winning the game. In that. You've got as many, you've got our second choice best front three kind of thing, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Or second or third choice, actually, because I've got Salah in. You've got a lot of good players in there, but you've you've rotated, you've rotated at the same time. I've probably rotated slightly too much. Maybe. But again, I, I, for me... You're the only gonna, one who's got Matip in, though, as well. Well, yeah, like, Matip, I would imagine, will come back in. Um, and that's, if he's fit, he, he plays, doesn't he? All for all the will in the world. Lovren and Clavin had a good game against Arsenal, but... See you back yeah, see you, see you, I, I, see, actually, I actually went with Gomez at right back because uh, largely it was linked to the Carrius thing, is that keep your best defence. You change your goalkeeper, but keep your best defence out on the pitch. I, here's how I think this game might be, might be slightly different to maybe how we think it's going to go, because I think there's a good case to be made that you do. You put, I don't think... I don't think he'll put his best the the Fab Four out because I think there's too just it's just too much footy for them. But there's a, a strong case to be made like that way. You put five attacking players out and you just basically go out to smash them. But it wouldn't shock me to see because they are the kind of team that's going to try and play footy. And I don't think we need to go. I, I think we can conserve energy in this game by actually being a bit more boring and being a bit more just being solid. And, it's and funny that Milner said that's what Liverpool need to be. And it Milner, would, after the well, Arsenal no, game, no, no, hilarious. Like, he fucking knows. He's, he's well free. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's fed But what, what I'm driving at is they, 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 they need the points. They, and they're with, you know, with, a, with a, maybe a little bit of confidence or whatever they're coming. They're just, I think they're going to come swinging for us. But I think we should be good enough to handle that. And, they, and I, I would just say, look, we've got three games coming up in, the, in seven days or whatever. I would just be looking to hit them on the counter. Have a two, have, look for a two or a three niller without having to ever hit truly hit your hit your stride, and that might be again people might expect us to come out and just flatten them in forty five minutes, and I'm not saying that won't happen, but it wouldn't shock me to see us take a, a a slightly more conservative approach to this because these Boxing Day games are always are always like that. The, psychologically, they're a lot harder than people give them give them credit for. Again, it's not just on the back of just playing a game four days before or whatever. But also that you know, you know, between the thirtieth and the first. What goes on with the what goes on with the Liverpool players? Like you can't be having what you can't be eating what I eat on Christmas nah, Day and playing be. footy on well, boxing. Stu- like, funnily they enough, must have yeah. days like well, funnily enough, the day after the Arsenal game Daniel, or something. Daniel like that. Sturridge basically. So we had a. Uh, so can you remember whether it was that was it our interview with Sturridge or was it the Peter McDowell one? So we, we've actually got it on the website. And look, if you're a subscriber to the RedmenTV.com website, the Christmas Day subscriber special, there's a Daniel Sturridge bit in there, and he talks about that kind of stuff and he basically says that you, they're not they don't have they it don't have you can't Christmas. have a proper Christmas I can't you can even move in. on Boxing Days yeah exactly but it's mad that, that that's the that's the period where I, I was chatting to Dan Huckabee at the North West Footy Awards and he was talking about that the FA Cup game for Coventry it, it was like very early January that and he was just he said I was just dead I was knackered my legs were totally gone but I got into the game and I realised after like 15 minutes, God, these Liverpool players are even worse than me. <laughs> and that's one of this is one of those <clears> games <throat> where we, I, 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 like, going back to exactly what you said about like the the, the squad rotation thing, I, I think Liverpool can afford to just keep it tight for 45 minutes and pick them off in the second half when because their legs will go and we've got fresher legs in in reserve. We, this game doesn't need to be won in half an hour, although it would be ideal. I think I can think we can afford to take a little bit of take a little bit of time and build into this game. I don't think the atmosphere is gonna gonna be amazing. It's one of them, isn't it? Everyone's half asleep in the Boxing Day games, full of turkey, etc. So yeah. be an interesting game to watch. I'm just not sure it's necessarily gonna be the goal fest that maybe we, we hope it will be in the way that we think it might be. But again, to repeat myself on it, we'll do this a lot this season. Vital to just get into the swing and pick three. Biggest three game points. of the year. Yeah, so far. Biggest big yeah. Yes. <laughs> biggest little game of the year. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, what do <clears> you think the score's gonna be? I'm gonna go against you just because I'm gonna go with what I hope the score's gonna be. So an exciting five three. 
Fucking hell. Unboxing you hope day. for that? Yeah. Eight goggles. Get out. You are. Yeah. London's Upwards. changed you. I'd take 2 0 over 5 today. I'm, I'm going 2 0 actually. Yeah. That's, my, uh, that's my score for this. I think, I think we'll win 3 0, but. Uh, I'd, I'd, again, it might be one of those where we score a late, a late first half goal just to just to finally break them down, and then we'll we'll maybe score too late on in the game when the, when their legs have completely gone. So like two of the subs will come on and just fill, finish the game off for us, and everyone will leave five minutes before the end of the match to get home to have their you know turkey butties or, or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me know your score predictions in the comments below. Uh, as I say, don't forget to go to the and subscribe, see that storage thing, see a whole lot of exclusives. But most importantly, why you're here on YouTube, we're on the road to 200,000 subscribers. Amazing. We've been on this road for a long time. Well, no, but yes, <laughs> but... Mad, which is crazy. The, Seven <coughs> friggin' years. It, but it took us like five to get to 100, and it's, you know, it's taken two to get the, the next 100 pretty much. Like, so we want to bash through it. If you watch the content every single week, but you haven't subscribed, um, just do, just drop a, drop a subscribe on it. We want to get there. It's a nice big milestone. Means something to us, you know, and hopefully, you know, if you if you appreciate the work that we do do and producing the, the the show every week and dragging Aubrey up from London for for specials to film at two o'clock in the morning before Christmas, um, then please do subscribe and click the notification bell as well if you want to be the first people in the comments to know when we go live on the starting eleven, etc., etc. Make Chris smile. Look at that face. Look at that smile. Slight. I mean, he'll smile. He'll smile slightly less yeah. Philip than that. <laughs> he'll do um, more. <laughs> perfect that's exactly the smile great um, so yeah please do uh, thank you very much for watching uh, the show we'll have a couple of bits and pieces post Swansea and then we're going to be kicking up towards uh, Leicester and forward into 2018 thank you very much have a very Merry Christmas and hopefully three points as a little bit of a late Crimbo Prezi too <laughs>